What's going on, everybody? My name's Calvin. My name's Angelo. We are the Vision Twins, and we lost combined 300 pounds. Now it's our life mission to show the entire world how to do the same thing. In today's video, we got our best friend from El Cajon, California, Mr. Chris Diaz. Now I taught you the handshake. Oh, the homeboy, the hometown friendship right here. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So that boy Chris, man, we're gonna get into his get into the the whole thing, but we just want to make sure we introduce you. We got how we know each other and shit, man. Bro, Chris we go Diaz. back, bro. Chris Diaz, the man. His at is right here. Make sure you guys all go follow him before we even start this hey, podcast. Hey, stop talking. Let him say something. Go ahead. <laughs> Fucking curl up. Nah, yeah, yeah. I'm introducing him. He's getting. I'm, let me let me button him up real quick. All right. Appreciate it, y'all. What a fabulous interest, man. I'm definitely blessed to be here. I'm happy you guys moved here to Phoenix, man. Now you guys are gonna be here every day. You guys are gonna see a lot of me, a lot of them. We're gonna make a lot of yeah. content together. We lit. And we're just three kids from El Cajon just trying to make a difference and trying to help everybody else. So love y'all yeah. boys. Box. Let's, let's get into it. Let's get it. We gotta work on a handshake, but we already got the handshake. He know it. Alright, bet. Let me get to see if he knows me. Yeah. yeah. Two. Wait, wait, wait. One, two, two. slide back. V. Uh, yeah. Shimmy it up. <laughs> you play basketball. We get, we get you know handshakes. There? You know, man, you play. So that's that's how we know Chris, guys. He was really popular in basketball back in high school. Real popular. But, uh, but we knew him back like in the jerkin days, like when jerkin was started to pop off in middle school, and everybody starts to know everybody in the city. That's yeah. like how we how we ran into Chris, and since then it's always been rec basketball. Yeah. And let's talk. Man, let's else? talk about the jerkin days real quick. I, I feel like the jerkin days kind of got us to here, because I know when I was jerkin. I, I was in a little crew and our crew got sponsored. Yeah. And we were in like in eighth grade and that was the first time like I realized that, oh snap, I can make money online. Like right. I, got, I got my first sponsorship at eighth grade from this clothing company. And I remember I thought it was fake. Bro. Yeah, what was it called? There's hella jerking companies in San Diego. There yeah, was. They just be giving out like t-shirts. There was, there was like the hella like black jerking crews and then there was like yeah. different sets from like, that's crazy. There was like black jerking crews, Mexicans, Otai Ranch. Yeah, like, <laughs> Otai Ranch. So many that's, different. That's where all the battles were Otai down the East Lake. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot to do out there, but doing that jerking stuff kind of led me to my business stuff today because I learned how to work with people, how to get brand deals, how to put stuff online trial and error on the captions on like YouTube videos and which now led to my Instagram and TikTok. So mm -hmm. just kind of, it all led to everything we did it back in the past kind of led to where we're at today, so. Yeah, no, I mean, it's really culture. I'll say even culture, you know what I mean? Culturally being able to speak, being bilingual, you know, you speak Spanish, but Spanish to English, right? Yeah, yeah. So being bilingual, like when it comes to that culture and like how you grew up, I think that's super cool. Like when you're talking about meeting, uh, meeting new business people and being a new business, yeah. opportunity, getting new business opportunities, like that's important. Yeah, hey, I was gonna say um, one of the things that we used to do back in the day was like he picked us up for football practice. So this is one of our stories that we always tell people like how we got to really bonding and hanging out with each other and like being friends is my mom paid him like a hundred bucks a week to pick us up from it was know, like summer, a, it was something like that summer day and go to football practice and we got him on the football team. And you know, after every day of practice, we would go eat because we were hungry. Like all football players just got done with like a three hour practice, trying to eat some food. And we ended up going to this place called Jack in the Box. Everybody oh, knows Jack in the Box. My favorite back in the day. You know, I'm, gonna just let you just, I'm gonna just let you come up with how this happened because I feel like this is very popular in San Diego or even in the city of El Cajon. Like if you were around of age, old enough back then, you know about this code called the Jack in the Box code. Yeah, so. If you were in high school from like 2012 to like 2018 in the El Cajon, San Diego area, you probably know about this Jack and Box code and pretty much like <laughs> our whole team. That's how we got big, man. That's how we Our whole team kind of had this, this text message coupon. It looked super legit. It would come from the Jack and Box number, right? And it would say, Blah blah blah. You have a free large combo or whatever it was. There's a free large know. combo every time. Bro. Every time. Yes. Combo. And then so it was like an eight nine eight was the code. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let him say it. Shut up. Well, no. I'm gonna get to. Let him say the story. You I'm gonna, no, 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 no. But it was. A, you, there's an important part. There's a three digits to it that made it just so easy to use and it worked every time. Yeah. That's what I think is super important to mention in there. This Jack in the Box code for a free large meal worked every single time. It didn't matter what youth high school kid was using it. It worked and they gave us free meals every yeah. time, which I don't understand. To this day, how they kept for giving us meals for years. So this is how we would have to get the text messages. We would text like the regular, you know, text and entry to get um, messages from Jack in the Box, like to get a free burger sometime <laughs> later on in the future. But like, we just saved that number 
because I already had a conversation with Jack in the Box, <laughs> and then you would just say, you'd send that message yourself, or like, you would just basically recreate the whole thread yourself yeah, you create the by sending message. what they sent to you from their number, and you just change, it was crazy. Change the expiration date at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, you change the expiration date, and every month we'd be updating it, and like, man, for like, our sophomore year to like, at least senior end year. of, early senior June, year, early yeah. senior year, we were using that Jack in the Box wow. code, and then, Man, like they ended up putting like signs outside of the Jack in the Box saying we do not accept text message <laughs> coupon codes. Like it was years though. That's the, the crazy thing. thing. It, it was went, years. It went on for a while and it, it was crazy because I remember we were at Jack in the Box get, waiting for our food, right? And I saw like the next five people who were in line <laughs> using the code. They were yeah. coming to the cash register and they'll show their phone like, hey, and we I'm all using this code. Because yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. Every everybody in the city was using it. It, it was crazy, but. Y'all gotta kind of know the, the struggle of the city, El Cajon, man. El Cajon is a whole different topic, right? Like, y'all wanna tell them about El Cajon? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's like a box. It's, it's a just box. a box city. Literally. Literally. It's what it means in Spanish. It's El Cajon means a box. So like, it's just that kind of that kind of mindset being there. Like, it's very easy to get stuck in there. But for some reason, we always knew we like had to leave. Even though we really love the city, like we really love the city that we're from, for some reason, something was just telling us to like get out. It's just the roots, man. I feel like, once, if you grew up in the same spot, same part of El Cajon, like you have a mentality that like, you just know, like you know when you gotta finesse. Like I feel like everybody that's from El Cajon has that like way to like get something when they need to. Like yeah. it's just a finesse thing. Like literally, we just would learn get how to get to it. it. If you didn't have it, you had to learn how to get it. Type shit. You can get your way to the NFL. Like like we're talking about like there's this Clay Thompson video we we're watching yesterday. How this guy snuck onto the court and we're like, I was just thinking he had to have been from El Cajon. Like <laughs> they were, like getting into the Super Bowl getting into you know those pranks that you see like that's literally when you think about El Cajon, that's the type of kids that were raised out of there it's like the kids that would sneak can sneak into any event somehow like mm -hmm. somehow get to the back vip of any famous <laughs> musician like it's crazy i don't know how somehow we have that like this phase event phase rug event that we that was here in um in the during the summer last year it was at the mall arizona mills it was mm -hmm. Kyler murray's pop-up shop um, and Faze Rugg was there, the one from, he's from San Diego, the Chaldean kid. Yeah. And uh, we did a video with him in like May. And then two months later, he was coming to Phoenix and we just happened to be there on the bus. He was gonna be at Arizona Mills at the, oh, at the, at the Kyla thing. Murray sneaker yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. So he was there and we were waiting in front of security, Angela and I just with our, with our phone and like just showing the security that we knew Brian, like we knew Faze Rugg. Mm -hmm. Like we're trying to get into this event. Ha, mind Murray. you, we only fucking hung out with him one time. Only like, one time, gosh. like. So like, but we had his number though. That's one thing that- And we were texting, but like he ghosted us. Cause like we yeah. was just not like popping like that, but it was crazy. Like we had his number, we're like, yeah, like we're here just to, you know, kick it with Kyla or with uh, Faze Rugg. Think like he read event. it, but he couldn't reply back. But that's the thing too, like, at that level, like there's so much shit going on. Like he follows, like he follows us, and that's what I appreciate. Like the fact that he can, we have that, like not like that camaraderie. You know what I mean? Like it's cool that he recognizes us from San Diego. Like yeah. 20 million, 25 million subscribers on YouTube. Like yeah, but anyway, so like anyway, we were standing in front of the security, and I was like, we're like, as soon as Brian walks in, like he's gonna let us in, watch, and then like Brian walks in, phase row, whole walks crowd, in, whole people. fucking Arizona Mills. Oh, Brian, we thought it was like freaking. Michael Jackson walking in, bro. I was like, this is crazy. Like, Video game, real like, followers, like, real And so he out. walks into the front of the store, and we've been standing in front of the security, and we had been people coming up to us. And, like, we we're still building credibility with the security because he didn't, we could have just been anybody, but we had kids mm -hmm. notice us on TikTok, mm -hmm. and they're like, you're the vision twins. So we're taking pictures, and he still wouldn't let us into the bag VIP, though. But as soon as Faze Rug walks in with his, like, his whole crew, uh, his whole group, we just walk in with this Christian Kirk right there with him. Uh, we walk in right next to him, like, what's up, Brian? He handshakes us, dabs us up, and we just like walk into the group. <laughs> <laughs> we just walk like, into the group. Like, we, not, walk into the group. we walk in to have the red carpet open, the red thing open, and we just walk straight through yeah. with everybody else. And bro, we're, and now then, we're like, bro, at this point, we're back there with Kyler Murray, Christian Kirk, FaZe Rug, like, nah, bro, Calvin does the most cringiest like, shit, bro. So uh, fucking Kyler Murray comes, and this is like when everything starts going everything crazy. Everything starts right? going crazy. People start going really crazy because Kyler's there, he's like holding the event. Bro, Kyler Murray walks in. And Calvin's like, goofy, bro, but I'll get it. He's just trying to get that fucking picture. Like, bro, we need this shit for social media, bro, at the time. Yeah. He just goes up and like, oh, what's up, Kyler? Like, daps him up. And Kyler's like, <laughs> Like he almost like remembered this. He's like, like, he like, he like, like, nah, I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> and then like trying like looking away, he's like, I was like, yeah, like, let's get a picture. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, yeah, at that point, he was like, I, I don't know. Like, it was crazy. You, though, you know that bro. moment when you don't recognize somebody? It's just like you gotta keep pushing. Yeah. It was like that. But I, I don't even. He give just a wanted fuck. to get the picture. I didn't give a fuck. Because he definitely he looked me straight in the eyes like, like, what's up? He's like, I don't know who you are. Yeah, I respect it though. You gotta do what you gotta do. Hey, like, the worst thing know, 
worst thing he could do is say no. Yeah. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, we all just humans, man. That's oh God. true. Social media stuff ain't, ain't real. But, oh, facts. but speaking of social media, like I want to know why y'all started the vision. So it's like y'all kind of told me about it today, but even I was kind of shocked because you guys said it was because of the Jack in the Box. So how does the Vision Twins come about? Because I remember just seeing it on, on IG out of nowhere. You know, mm. I, mean, I was supporting, but then out of nowhere, yeah. takes off. Mm. So and when did you really? When did you notice that like our social media presence was like crazy? Like when it was big. When y'all started doing the lives and people would hella be on the lives, I'm yeah. like, oh yeah. shit. You popped in on the live, you go, oh yeah. damn, that's how the people are. Okay, y'all really doing it for real. Like, we just attacked on the moment, bro, during COVID. Like we had the name Vision Twins in 2018. Mm. And then everybody was like telling us in Oklahoma, like get on YouTube, you know, but we made a video in 2018 when we first started. It did good like within Oklahoma, but then after that, it didn't really like go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until like COVID came around and Jarquin stayed with us. Jarquin. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, Jarquin, Jarquin. Yeah, <laughs> he stayed, yeah. he was our roommate and he was like, you guys won't make it in LA. In like October of 2019, he was like, you guys won't make it. So we kicked and, him out. And we kicked <laughs> him out. <laughs> we kicked that nigga out. Cause like, when, how are you gonna be hating on right, right, right. like your roommate trying to do something better? So we're like, oh no, you gotta go. Like, <laughs> we're, the last month we were there, like cleaning out his apartment, we're cleaning out the apartment, getting rid of shit. And then um, we ended up finding like a spot on like roomies, like this like app that you can find like a roommates or whatever. So Calvin gets a spot within like two days, we put in a 30 day notice. January 1st hits, we stay there for that full month, and then February, we were out of there. West Hollywood. And February 1st, we lived, I have like a picture on my phone. We like, we're in Hollywood, bro, and like right outside our house, bro, it was like mansions. We picked a good spot, like, because yeah. it was a bunch of mansions and shit, but we walk outside, bro, like, directly down the street, you can see the Hollywood sign, like, straight down. When you wake up and you just go outside. That's like great motivation, too, to bro, see that every day, like. You just wake up and see that shit, it's like, holy fuck. I'm like, bro, we'd be, we didn't have a car, no motion. We had, no, we had like 300 followers on Instagram, like, we were yeah. out there just like, bro. Just and and, and, and it didn't grow up with no connections, no rich Hell family, nothing. nothing. Like, I bro, anytime we asked for a handoff, I'm like, Tay, remember Tay Lopez, the black kid? Do you know Tay Lopez? He was like, he knew Tanner Fox. You don't, you don't know Tanner Fox? But anyway, yeah. he hung out with them. And we had a close connection with him in 2018. He was like, like I don't know why you're asking me. He probably had like 20, 20K on his He blew team. up off of somebody else. And that's the thing. That, that gave me hell of motivation. Like, I was like, I don't want no fan. I don't want no put on. Like, fuck a handout. Like, because right there after that, I was like, all right, bet, like, we just gonna have to get this shit out the mud, bro, like, real shit. Yeah. So then we moved to LA, bro, and, like, within the first, like, two weeks there, COVID starts hitting, like, mm -hmm. and there's, like, eight yeah, people, yeah. ten people moving in there, February and, like, we had just signed the lease for, like, six months. I remember that. <laughs> to stay there the day before, oh, and, like, the day before that shit happened, and then we're, like, oh, fuck that, like, we just signed the lease, but, like, fuck it, COVID, like, we, we just, just gonna move out of here, yeah. what the fuck they gonna say? So then, February, we moved to Orange County and stayed with our cousin. And we had a, all we had was a car, bro. Like really, our car and like a month's worth of rent. Yeah. And this is when like school was ending because we were online for our college. But thankfully, when that was we, we did online so we can move up to LA and do it from you know yeah, home. Yeah. So then we were right. getting our right. yeah we were getting our FAFSA, bro. And like we we're basically just living off of like eight hundred bucks a month. And then like, bro, we get on TikTok one night because Calvin had gotten an argument with his girlfriend. I was and going to was San like, Diego like every week. He was like, bro, every time we'd start filming. Change. <laughs> yeah, every time we'd start filming, Calvin would drive down to San Diego to go hang out with this girl. Mm -hmm. And then like all the motion, all the freaking power we're about to have for that week like stops. Cause then he comes back and he's like, oh yeah, what are we doing? Like not even really in it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so then fucking. Okay. Sounds like my friend over there. <laughs> <laughs> so then bro, like we uh, get on TikTok one night, the night he breaks up with her and we're just like, if you're not overweight or obese, get the fuck off this video. And like, just that, like, I could tell people we woke up, bro, and like numbers, bro, like 250k views, like 10,000 followers. Yeah. Like, I was like, 99, like, 99, seeing, 99 seeing your 99. account with 10k, like seeing that you have most, bro, you got followers, like you got power. We're refreshing like, every second is 99, 99, yeah, 99, like 99, 99, 99, thousand followers, thousand followers, thousand followers. We're like, bro, like this is it, like this is it, like nigga, this is it. Like yeah. we knew it's once you see that little bit, of, we just need a little bit of inspiration, but yeah, just yeah. something to just say that what we were doing was right, bro. That video popping off, we're like. And TikTok, Hot. and then by the next week we were teaching the live streams. So this is like April 2020. We started teaching who, the live. Who came up with the live stream idea? Like, how did that come? Our about? dad. Our dad, bro. Because he was in TJ and he has clients in person. They went online on Facebook, and I was doing the Facebook live stream with him, and he would have like 12 people on his teaching oh, his clients man. in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, be getting water breaks, like taking the cues and stuff yeah. from the workouts. I'm like, man, this is lit. Like I was having fun. I'm like, yo, and we basically, I was like, dad, we just stole from our dad. So like he would have 12 people, and then the top stream we've ever had on Instagram was like. 1100. 
Man. It was like New Year's 2021. We had like 1,100 people man. on one work, 30 minute work. That, that workouts is tough, man. It I works. did one at the beach, man. I, I was hurting the next day. <laughs> yeah. I was hurting them, them workouts for real. Yeah, bro. So then we started doing that. Ever people, since then, but like, yeah, we were just started losing hella weight. We started seeing like people said this is what changed our thing too, because you know how we post our clients and shit, bro. What changed that? That like changed our whole page when we started posting other people. This like, is real shit now. It's not yeah, even it's like, like it's not just like oh these guys are just doing it behind the camera like bro transformation transformation for a month transformation, or like for a month or two months like it was kind of like we, we didn't know any, we didn't no know work, what we were doing because you know? we didn't have any like nobody really gets results in a month or two months but like bro once the two month hit two three months like, like we're sending like, us pictures like bro back in you know three months March when I found you guys or April when I found you guys and then now it's June and I'm literally you guys literally changed my life like forty wow. pounds and then we were saying like saying like hot boy summer hot girl summer like I remember the hot hot boy summer merch yeah and the people. Just like they started just saying it, like because yeah. it's time to get in shape, bro. Like fuck the being obese, bro. Like That's we were really, fire. you know, people were getting real results, yeah. and then from there that credibility just came and like, and then we ended up like moving to Texas. And see, the, throughout this whole process of us like doing Vision Twins, bro, we've never like been established, like sat down because we moved out and never really got on our feet. We got a bag, but like fucked it off. Like we just didn't necessarily know, you know what I mean? And like. So everything's just been like kind of trial and error and learning because nobody's that's what, ever helped us, bro. Like, about, though. Yeah, like I'm glad that it's like that because I don't have to rely on anybody, but like, yeah, bro, just doing it by ourselves, bro. Like everything's been by ourselves. So this whole thing, everything from Vision Twins, bro, nothing has not been seen by us or done by us. Like from mm -hmm. printing the shirts to like buy, going and buying the t-shirts, grabbing yes. them. Cleaning up the workouts, them. knowing how we want to program workouts. Like, like literally, bro, buying, pre buying printers to Buying the decals, making the t-shirts, bro. Like, they, we've done everything. Writing letters, shit. every every package. Anything you can imagine. And, like, this is a Nipsey Hussle quote that reminds me, like, just keep going, bro. It's like, uh, I went through every emotion with trying to do this shit. Like, bro, I like, maybe a year ago, I thought I had went through every emotion, bro. More emotions since then. Like, I've made everything you could possibly experience doing anything or emotions in life. I felt it with this shit. Like, nice, nice. And so, like, now I'm just like, I know this is my shit, bro. Like, Cause before it was kind of like, man, we're young. Like, are you really that great? You know, but like, once you just start tapping into like the shit, and you know, like, okay, yeah, I've done some real shit. Like, That's now you just know you're like the shit. You know what I mean? And it is good. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Cause before yeah. it's hard to. From where we're from, bro, there's nobody to look up to. That's like social media famous or popping. Oh, like, mm. there's no inspiration know. like that. Like, oh, only NASCAR drivers. Who was it? Jimmy Johnson? And even <laughs> then, like, like, who gonna be a NASCAR driver? Yeah. Like. From where we from? Like that's not relevant. Shout out Jimmy us. Johnson though. He he came to our school and what did he do? I mean, I, I, he I'm, like. I'm sure he sponsored some stuff. I remember we had an assembly about Jimmy Johnson pulling up, and I remember all that. And, and he went to to my middle school, Emerald. Mm. Where'd you guys go to middle yeah. school? Yeah. Literacy first. Yes. Oh. Literacy it's first. like a charter school. Mm. So now you know go? literacy first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squares. <laughs> nah, ballers. <laughs> They're lame. Oklahoma ballers. <laughs> Nah, but I'm glad, like, the way we were raised, bro, you went to a public school. We went to, like, charter school. So yeah, we, we had to wear a private uniform. Yeah, we like, school. couldn't have phones and at your desk or some shit like that. Like, teachers wouldn't Dress cuss. Code. Yeah, charter school. Bro, charter. when we went to Granite, the first day I heard a teacher cuss, I was, like, looking around, like, at the other kids, like, we're we not going to tell her. Like, <laughs> like, she just fucking said, she said, bitch, or some shit like that. Yeah, bro. I was, like, like I'm, I'm going to tell the principal, like, I've never seen this, because, like, yeah. You would tell the like, kids would snitch on the teacher out of charter school, but like they're, they're still public that. school, they don't go fuck. Like I was like, holy <laughs> shit! Like oh. public school's way different. Let's just get through it. Like yeah. just fucking get them through. We don't even like care so, about them. How'd you guys get to Granite then from Legacy? Because isn't Legacy literacy but, or literacy? Where's that at? It's just we applied. Just uh -huh. applied to Granite. We were in the area. We lived in the area. Don't, don't. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. glad I went to Granite. I wasn't even supposed to go to Granite. I had Where to are you use, supposed to go? I had to use my uncle's address to go to Granite. Oh, so do we. We had to we use, use hella addresses for some reason. Hella different we were addresses. in the same area, but we just had to use. It's because well, the difference is here in Arizona, you don't you don't have to go to the school that's in your area. You can you can pick any school that's really? open enrollment. Uh, Whereas right. in San Diego, where we're from, El Cajon as well, you have to go to the school closest to your zip code. Each zip code has a school attached to it yeah. by the district. So my school, I was supposed to go to El Cajon Valley High School. And everybody, everybody in San Diego knows that's one of the worst schools to go. Not just like off academics, the academics were okay based off the little ratings, but like all the crime that was going on, all the stuff that was just going on outside of the school, like my mom definitely did, did not want me to go. And that school was like maybe like a 10 minute walk from, yeah, from, yeah. from my whole crib. And then, and then I ended up going to, um, I was supposed to go to Girl Small because that's where all my friends were going, but my mm -hmm. mom was like, nope. 
you're not gonna go there because I was a, I was a troublemaker. Mm-hmm. I was getting into into a you would have more trouble. trouble at girls exactly. Party. So she's like, you're gonna go to Grammy where you don't know nobody. And I remember pulling up there. You knew people though. I, I didn't. Did. Well, the actually, first day. The first day, no. You didn't know nobody. As a freshman, he was 12 years old. How you you went to yeah. Emerald? You, you went to, to know you people. graduated you high school, school at 16. You're saying nobody from Emerald went to Granite? Just like maybe two or three people. My boy Nor, my boy Terrence, and that's it. That's it. You didn't know people at Oklahoma, huh? Yeah, I would have known, known people at Oklahoma. Because yeah. everybody from Emerald went to Gross yeah. Mall or Oklahoma. Yeah. Maybe like two or three went to Granite. And I went to Granite, and I just remember like being a damn, I do not fit in here. Because if you know Emerald, it's a very, very diverse school. Yeah. And, and Granite Hills High School is it's like... Hilarious. Yeah, that's how like. to put it in, in lack of better terms. Yeah, so it made me like grow up and and, try, still, and try to change how how I was because I remember trying to be like a little thug, a little yeah. Little <laughs> bigger, it still did. Granted, it still did have a city vibe though. Granted, did still have a city vibe. We we had like our little crew, right? But the, the majority, I would say, ninety five percent of the school was white. Was white. Yeah. So you, yeah. It was hard to to fit in. Like I remember, I, like I, I didn't have, really have a lot of friends my freshman year. I just had, was cool with the basketball team. Mm-hmm. Sophomore year, pretty much cool with the basketball team. And then my junior year, when I when I met y'all and started like hanging out with more football players, I started meeting the other the uh, other like, the white boys, <laughs> the white people. Because I remember we just we just used to have our own little. Oh section yeah, you didn't, you didn't know any. Yeah, you didn't know anybody about that. I, I about didn't get out. Team. I didn't get out of that section at mm-hmm. all. You never left. Yeah, you're always in that group. But I, I'm glad I did because it helped me out with like later on how to communicate with people, how mm-hmm. to just step outside your comfort zone. Yeah, I'm surprised, bro. Like, you were not a football player at all, but like. And you didn't even really always play like that. Like, he wasn't like a star or nothing, but he was just there, like, always about to be on the team type. Not even saying, like, <laughs> not to say he was not good, just like, nigga. I remember he there made a couple players. Yeah, he played special teams, but I'm just saying, like, he was just on the team, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just for, to be around the guys. I, honestly, sure. honestly, I did, it, I did it for my little bro, just to kind of show him that he could play football. But I, my main sport was, was basketball. Basketball mm-hmm. was, was my ish, man. I'm, I'm so proud, so thankful for mm-hmm. basketball. A lot of people take that sport for granted. But I know, like, even for y'all too, I know football taught you a lot of life lessons on how to, like, be committed to something, how to work towards a goal. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody should play a sport growing up. It's, oh, a, facts. it's, it's a beautiful thing. You learn so many life hacks. You learn so many traits that will, that will help you out in the future. So, big advocate for sports. Right. Make, make your kids play. And that goes along with, with y'all too stuff, the fitness stuff. Mm-hmm. Got to gotta keep a positive, healthy lifestyle just to – just to live better, just to yeah. do more, just to have mm-hmm. the energy to to add to this world. Mm-hmm. And what would you say to like the youth right now that are that say are like the the lazier loot, they the lazier youth out there that don't necessarily work out or or stay in shape or try to get fit? You gotta you gotta find something that motivates you. You gotta be depressed, really, really, really depressed about something that's gonna force you to work. Like for me, growing up in El Cajon, I was so depressed living there. Like there wasn't a lot mm-hmm. of stuff going for us and even even to this day i think it even got worse so like just just off of me being so depressed of me Mm -hmm. wanting to get out and and try to make a change in my life like i worked hard every single day Mm -hmm. and i tried different things to finesse different things to you know just come up on some money just so i could get up out of there luckily the sport of basketball got me to to phoenix arizona Mm -hmm. and i'm always thankful because if i didn't play basketball i don't know where i'd be at right now Mm -hmm. for real bro that's so I'm just, I see that in you too, cause like you went to you were in inner city El Cajon kid growing up, so like yeah. you grew up with all the best. I don't think anybody's gone out as far as like when it comes like, cause you were even you were still even more in the set than we were. I would say yeah. you you were still even more in there. So to come out from from there like that's like, we got whitewashed. But yeah, like, to be honest, oh, yeah. yeah, that's the week we still cooked it. Yeah, I was just a, I was just a big follower before before my junior year. I was just a big follower. I just followed whatever was cool or whatever people was doing wasn't really on like my own path and then my junior year like it just clicked it just clicked like this is something I got to do this is something I can really take to the next level at the time I like I, I just wanted to play in the NBA but it's not realistic like I'm barely 5'10 5'11 right not the most most athletic like I'm not gonna make it to the NBA but I was so brainwashed all the, like I see it that's what was around yeah and, and you you guys are part of this too I think all athletes go through this like you go through your sport and it's like your junior, senior year of high school and you're like kind of like, okay, what's that next step? And a lot of them think, okay, I gotta go to college, gotta get a D1 scholarship. And then from there, like my sport will, will take me in life. Like didn't y'all feel like that? Like yeah. with football, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of reprogramming that structure because playing sports builds a lot of bad mental health because everybody's so passionate about their goal or they're passionate 
or they're trying to show off to people that, oh, I got this scholarship, and then you see you see my friend over here, he's getting all these scholarships, but why not me? Mm-hmm. And for and for me, like I know that messed me up a lot in high school. I know that messes up a lot of people, and my mental health was like so bad. But once I got my two surgeries, I it kind of reframed my my mind my mindset a little bit. I was like, well, I can't really make it out of basketball anymore as long as playing, right? Mm-hmm. So I, to, I had to switch my, my efforts. So remember I used to throw parties all the time in, in college just to kind of pay my bills, threw one with, with you and my guy Amir back over here, <laughs> we threw a huge warehouse party. And it was just different ways to, to make money. Then we evolved to throwing concerts, but like that was never, never really me. Mm-hmm. And then just one day it clicked to me, like it's gonna be basketball. And I just started posting my basketball stuff, started coaching at a young age. I graduated at 19. Became the youngest college coach in America at the time, man. I didn't, yeah, I didn't even know what I was doing, bro. I was just out there. Yeah. I, I walked in my first day. The players look at me, and I'm pretty sure they all thought I was a player. Actually, yeah, yeah they all told me afterwards <laughs> that they thought I was an incoming recruit. But afterwards, like, I was just standing there, like, just kind of with my arms crossed and just like shaking my head. And I because you knew what they were doing though, as far as like the drills and stuff. Yeah, I knew I knew all that stuff because I had just finished playing like two years ago. I was 17 when I stopped, when I got my first surgery on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And then I started coaching at 19 in college. And um, I just I just remember standing there, like not knowing what to say. I was nervous as heck. Like, how can I tell these guys what to do if I'm the same, exact same age as them? And some of those guys right. are older. Like, I was coaching at the Juco. <laughs> and Juco, You're Juco, older? yeah, Juco guys are old. Like, I remember there was a guy on the team who was like 23. The year after that, we had a kid that was, I can't even say kid, he was a man. He, he was yeah. 28. You know, 28. <laughs> you know, 28 years old, com- coming out of prison. Like, those type of stories in JUCO happen all the time. Like, if y'all haven't seen Last Chance, you go watch it. But hmm. coaching a 28 year old, I was 20. Coaching a 28 year old? Yeah. That's and, true. and every, you know, some people that I coached would just call me by my name, hey, Chris, because I was the same age. So they wouldn't feel the need to call me coach. But even this guy, he was 20 years old, he was still call me coach, still be very respectful. And then, he balled out that year, and then he, we ended up getting him a scholarship to his NAIA school in Northern California. And I remember that day he got that scholarship. He, he cried, gave me a hug. He's like, "Man, you changed my life." Like I was like, it "Wasn't me. You you worked hard for it." But like, man, coaching at that level was was so like heartwarming because you really got to see the changes in people's lives. And, Grown men. Yeah, and but that's what it takes. If you're desperate at something, mm-hmm. like you can really you can really make a change in your life. Facts, bro. Mm-hmm. I think we can end it right there, man. That's like 100%. that's pretty fire right there. Yeah. And that's just the beginning to it right there. Yeah, we that's talk. just the beginning of our conversation, man. Because sooner or later, not even sooner than later, real soon, we're gonna be you know doing this quite often. So this is a lot more to come from us, you guys. Teasing. Um, before we get going, though, we do have an app for you guys to sign up for to lose weight with us on your own time. Click the link in our description below. You can get your meal plans, your workouts, everything that you need to know to lose 50, 75, 100 pounds. Straight from the twins that lost 300. So, hey, and I'll be the first to say they were 300 pounds. They used to pop my wheels in my car. <laughs> I, I used to tell them only one twin at a time. Like, he would. God. And, I, and on, I'll say like on a good like five to ten times, like if you pick this up, he kept one of like one of us had to stay home because of that yeah. rule. Right no, there. I, the we were like, too big. We were too, too big. big. Yeah. Low key, my tires were kind of popping. I had a yeah, I made excuses and shit like that. I had a low old, gas. I had an 04 Nissan Altima, bro. That yeah. I was the third owner of it. That thing was on his last <laughs> wheel, bro. That, sometimes it wouldn't even turn on. He was sliding that thing. But hey, y'all, that's not the end of the video. Thanks for watching. It.